Hey, welcome everyone to the Archicad User Monthly Webinar for August 2022. My name is Eric Bobro, and my special guest today is Rich Matthews from uh, Newcastle area in Australia. How are you doing, Rich? I'm well, thank you very much. So it's uh, pretty early there in the morning. It's, uh, what is it, six in the morning there? Six o'clock, yes, I have to get up uh, before the uh, kookaburros were laughing. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for doing that. As you'll see on screen, um, uh, I think I'm sharing my screen from the ArcCAD user website. Uh, we were going to have Rich last month and he uh, got ill at the last minute and uh, had uh, to postpone. So today we will get a chance to take a look at uh, your work. Um, so uh, I'm gonna turn over the present presentation of the screen in a moment, but let's just make sure everybody can hear us and see us. So I'm uh, going to bring up um, questions on my end so I can see that. So please um, uh, share, say hello, tell us where you're calling in from, and uh, we'll be able to confirm that you can hear us and see us. So I see you, Ramrick and uh, Ian, Ian from Scotland. All right, and Mike from Maine, Nicole from my, my neighborhood, Berkeley, California. Um, Kelly from Utah. All right, so we're got people from um, I guess Scotland and uh, US, and I'm not sure where Romerick is. Um, there, David from Santa Rosa. All right, and we're up to about 50 people. I'm sure we'll uh, get our usual hundred or or a little bit more. Samir from Montreal. Elena from New Zealand. Okay, so we're getting some early risers, although it's not so bad in New Zealand. It's eight o'clock, I think, there. Um, all right, so Rich, um, we've uh, known each other for a while. Um, I've appreciated your uh, generosity in terms of sharing your work in previous sessions. Um, just briefly, when we first got to know each other, you offered to present something interesting at the Masters of Archicad Summit which was a conference, an online conference that I organized a few years back. Um, and then uh, we had you as a, one of the um, first pre presentations in the Archicad User Monthly Series. Um, so you're back again with uh, an update on one of the projects that you shared before the India Palace, um, and then uh, also something new, a whole sub-development. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, um, and uh, I'll make you presenter so you can, if you have something you want to show on screen. So this should be the Mac that we're um, on That's right correct. now? Yep. Okay, so let me, the Mac, because uh, Rich is going to be um, sharing from his Mac and then uh, separately some stuff from his PC, and we'll talk about why in a moment. All right. Is, have you got my... Um... Swimming pool uh, shot. Center, you have to just choose which screen you're going to share and tell it to go ahead. And so I see uh, we have um, Richard from Arnprior, Ontario, and Stuart from Melbourne, but currently in Switzerland. All right. So, yeah, just uh, fill in your questions. And this is also where you can ask questions, uh, you know, for Rich. Um, I will. Uh, sort of moderate and, and pass them along to him at appropriate times. So, uh, and Karsten, from right next door to, to you, Rich. Um, yes, I know you up on me. Yeah, all right. So go ahead, uh, tell us a little bit about your background and, uh, you know, what you're going to be showing us today. Well, I presume some of you have read the uh, email that Eric sent out. Um, uh, I've been in Australia now for 33 years, originally in Canada. I uh, came over with uh, the Holbert group who, did, who uh, were designing the Sanctuary Cove, which is one of the first gated, if not the first gated communities in, in the world, uh, a big project. So I came over to put computers into their office in the, on the Gold Coast um, and then opened up an office down in Sydney to do other projects. Some of them up here in, in Newcastle or close by at Caves Beach, big uh, uh, developments by the Japanese at the time. And after a few years, went out on my own. Well, I was selling uh, Archicad and supporting Arch Archicad. I was the support uh, resource for Archicad for uh, about three years in the early 90s. And then I went out on my own, um, 
still selling Archicad for a while, but then uh, just training architects and and um, helping with their projects. And that's evolved just into a, a practice on my own where I've done everything from model high-rise buildings for for others to uh, do renderings, et cetera. And then uh, mainly doing uh, single resident renovations, new developments, uh, new houses, and um, multi-unit uh, developments for some developers, etc. So I uh, don't think there's much more to say about that. Shall we okay, get well, into you've been it? around for, de for decades, and you've played a role both as a tech support and training uh, resource and consultant, as well as doing design and using Archicad and rendering programs like Twin Motion. Um, yourself and uh, yes what are we what are we looking at right now on screen well this is a project uh, up in uh, brisbane and a, a suburb called everton park um I'll, this is just an introductory uh, uh, video this was actually done by karsten m you can see the note on the bottom that uh, he's uh, a resource for both archicad tips and uh, certainly twin motion uh, he's got some courses so you might want to check out that website at some stage if you're looking at uh, at uh, getting either. Um, uh, so this development um, unfortunately isn't hasn't been uh, allowed to go ahead. It, the DA was approved but the uh, financing in the end didn't uh, evolve and uh, so the project was dropped and the uh, and the site was sold again. So uh, I doubt if it'll be revived but it was a, a very interesting exercise. Uh, Multi-units on a on a sloping site used to be a, an old um, oh, an existing tennis court complex, which I was a bit uh, reluctant to tear apart and take away from the local community, but that's business for you. Um, so the interesting thing here was trying to get uh, all these different levels in one file in Archicad. So this is the uh, uh, I think I've pretty well covered. The site actually varied in 13, 13 meters from front to back down the middle and about uh, six meters from side to side. Uh, and again, so there's that question, how do I get all the common floor plan levels on one sheet and and still be able to look at the whole site as a 3D you know, BIM model? Um, so I hope yeah, that all- Let's talk about that just for, just for a second. Because um, yep. you know, you're saying it in passing, and I just want to emphasize, in a, a simple, straightforward Archicad project with, you know, let's say one building, you know, each level represents, um, you know, or story, uh, let's say stories and levels are pretty much synonymous. Um, and, uh, you know, they're vertically arrayed, of course, first, you know, ground floor, next floor up, which might be the first floor in some countries, and it might be the second floor, let's say in the US. Um, now, when we have things that are split levels, where you have um, something that maybe half of one floor is on one level and another half is on another level, you can just say, hey, you know, th this is slightly off, it's raised up a bit, but we want to show it as if it was at the same level. So that's not too hard. Now, when you have multiple buildings on a site and you want to show them all um, and have the ground floor show as if they were all flat, then there are some tricks and Rich is going to show you what he ended up doing because otherwise things that are in the back of the, let's say the back of the um, property are significantly higher, different level anyway, um, than, than the front. And therefore, if you just did a, a single cutting plane, you would not see things on the same level. So that's what we're going to talk about, at least part of, part of today's session, is how do you deal with A, multiple units that are similar to each other but not necessarily identical um, so you how do you work with modules and copies and things like that and secondly how do you work with these different um, story levels in a way that you can get out the drawings that you need so that all the ground floor units or floor plans show up but of course in 3d they're not at the same level they're you know quite distinct so that was, I wanted to just set that up. This is what one of the things we'll be focusing on from a technical you know, point of view. So take it away. Okay, well, this is just to give you an idea of a cross section of the site um, and uh, the different levels. Um, 
you can see that uh, on the left there, we have the units A, then units B, which uh, look to be all sort of on the same level, except one's the, the same similar level as the garage, as opposed to the ground floor being another story up. Um, and likewise, then as we step up to units D and then finally to units E. Um, and like I said, the, the problem is trying to make sure that if you want to see the whole site in, in 3D, like I'm like I'm showing here with with all of the sections, um, you know how do you how do you build your various units and keep them separate enough that um, you're able to you know not have uh, other buildings or other floors showing, etc. Anyways, what so what I had done is that I came up with a with a uh, system of separating each of the unit groups. Um, you know, for instance, that's the, that's the the common level floor plan that I'm able to achieve with this method. Um, so those are all one floor. I can go to the second floor, the third floor, etc., if if that's appropriate for all of these, or the garage level, and each each of those will be shown on one layout sheet very easily. Um, how did I do that? Well, I took the uh, the idea that if you want to deal with just one unit group it'd be nice to have it just on a stack on its own so if you take a look at this you'll see that that unit a group site a has floor separations it's very similar to this one to the next one up etc uh whether it's got a garage or not that's the so what what i did is said okay I've got to separate these out. So I actually created the story structure so that there was a 10 meter difference between each of these unit groups, which means that you can look only at that at that one group and you say, okay, so it's going to be on 3D, it's going to be 10 meters higher, or in this case, it's going to be 20 meters higher, the one about 30 meters higher. But what I did then in 3D was to drop the level of the slab. So for instance, if I look at this ground floor at 89,400, I would expect that if I pull it down in 3D and then, and then build everything from that level um, uh, in that group, that will be at 79,400 for the ground floor. Likewise, with the ground floor of C here, where it says 97, thousand it would be it would be uh, 20 meters less than that so it'll be 77 uh, uh, thousand um, as the level so any questions about that well it'll it'll be clearer if you do bring up for example right. okay. the um, each group so I, yeah so if I go to here for instance this is the group a, a garage unit okay it's 80, it says 86,700, this is unit B's. So the actual story says 86,700, but the slab level was dropped 10 meters down to 76.7 meters, okay? If I so was then- um, Can you select, can you go to the actual plan or is this- um, Oh, I can do that if you want, yeah. Yeah, then, then we can see that although it has a home story that, you know, is one of these, you know, you've got, what is it, 40 different stories or something like that, or? or uh, would be 50, yes. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, so you have, that, that yeah dozens of stories. Um, so if we select just one of the slabs or one of the walls in this unit. So so if you take a look at this, this is, that's the slab level of the, of the floor of the garage. And of course the walls will be um, there we are. The walls. Just, just select one of the walls and let's look at its setting. So it's now 30 meters lower than its actual story setting, but everything is based then off of, of if I want to create something else, I look at this figure here. I don't look at this figure necessarily. Right. I look okay, at so let me just clarify that for because I'm, I'm sure many people understand, but a few people uh, may not. So normally you, let's say the con simplest convention is that you have a story level and your walls are at the zero of that story level and they go up to the ceiling or they go up to the next story. So they go from zero to three meters or zero to 10 feet or whatever on that story. In this case, we're saying that it's below the story level because we're 
we're using the stories where they can be visually separated, but then we're putting them in the site down at the appropriate level because these are located on the actual site, you know, in the XY site geography or or, or, or uh, whatever in their appropriate location. So they are actually dropped down to an appropriate um, elevation height. So that's why even though it says that it's on story 11 or story whatever it is, it is um, a negative value to compensate for the fact that Rich has separated out these groups sort of for organizational purposes rather than you know um, their physical placement. So that's why there's a negative number. Hopefully that's clear. Yeah, I imagine there'll be a few questions about that, but um, yeah, what's feel it, free for those of you who have questions, just type them into the questions area. Um, yeah, well, we're going along if we can. Um, so that's the basis. It's pretty simple once you've got it set up, and once you've put, you've you know you grabbed one story and and uh, or one unit group and and dragged down that uh, that first slab unit, then it's pretty easy to build on top of that. You you'll know what the the RL you want for the next one, both by the story structure. Um, you know, if you go up one floor, for instance, if I just as I did then, I just used the the um, the well, no, actually I did do it. So if I want to go to the first floor here in my organizer or navigator, that's the first floor. So if I automatically start drawing a slab now, um, um, uh, I got to think about this. <laughs> If you, eye drop, if you eye drop an existing slab, then? Well, like I said, if I wanted to go in and, and create a new slab, um, I, I would want to make sure that, um, well, there's there's the figure here. Yes, yeah, in actual fact, I can start drawing that from, uh, from either zero, you know, from that story. In this case, it's 200 mils up from that, uh, if I'd just gone with this slab. But you're able to pick easily what the RL is that you want for a new slab and start drawing the the walls and whatever. So it makes it quite simple to to. So when you uh, have a section, when you have a section, let's say the conventional thing would be that story levels in the Archicad project um, organizational structure would show up on the side. You're not able to use that because the story levels are really abstract, um, just to keep things all um, organized. Uh, so you have some um, elevation markers in one of the, in sections that are manual rather than story levels? Um, that would have to be correct, yes. I must have. Right. I must so can have you just show us one of the real sections or one of, you know, one of the sections through? Um, Certainly. I think then, then it'll be really clear. Um, so any of the sections. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, that's right. That should be. Um, sorry, I need to get it through. Oh, those are site sections, sorry. Uh, let's go through. So those are driveways, and you know, so you can see the elevations the section through on the site. So those things on the side that have the point elevation, saying the top of parapet and the first floor. Well, those... actually, yeah. If if you look at that, that's uh, not correct, of course. Um, so what did I do on the actual? Well, th those are those are your intended reference levels as opposed to Archicad story levels. That's what I want to point out. So it's going to bring up right now the um, uh, the, the B section. You're just going to get that in a moment. Yeah, I don't know why it's taking as long as it is, but oh, that's so a point. Of... So let's just see. Hopefully, it'll come up in a minute. It, uh, most commonly, you would say show the story levels on the side of the section. You know, to yep. to just identify them, and you can either. Uh, display and print, or you can um, just do display only. So if you can right-click here and um, say um, uh, that you'd like to 
show the story levels or right click and do uh, section settings and then say for story levels um, say you want to just display them not print so you actually you have display and output so so where are these shown these um, maybe you have the the story levels turned off in the global um, settings I think you probably do um, Oh, uh, shouldn't be. You mean here? No, no, no. It, it, that would be in your story settings, like you know where you have the forty or fifty stories. You probably have the checkbox turned off. Oh, Next. right. Yeah. So just for the uh, the B ones, for the B right. ones, just turn them on for now. Uh, so what have I got? B section. Ah. Interesting. It's jumping around as you do it, huh? Um, all right. So we're just saying that for demonstration purposes, you also have one of the C ones turned on by accident. Now, if you um, do a fit in window, it should. Um, show those so and we'll see that the actual native story levels for each of these elements uh, is you know way above the actual elevation on the site that's what uh, trying to make it clear Now the other thing that we're going to talk about, I know you and I had discussed it, was uh, you, these units are repetitive, but they're not identical. So I think that you dragged copies of unit plans around and then edited them to suit your needs so that there'd be uh, differentiation in the front elevations and they would look somewhat different and... and uh, yes. yes, basically they're... <sighs> Uh, well, again, this this has uh, in that video you might have noticed there is some, you know, a, a, a parking garage on the lowest level with, with, that was partially open. That's now there longer there. So there's been changes, of course, like with any development. But um, the you now so there's I only got one showing there, 86, and that's well, why only one? Uh, maybe because of your cropping um, of the uh, the vertical cropping. So if you can oh, just oh, raise yes. that crop line temporarily, I mean, in this here. So when you... Um, yeah, so that's what normally you would expect the building to be in this area here. But I've dropped it down. Yeah, so all of, the elements, all of the elements belong to, have a home story belonging to one of those ones up above, but they've been told, hey, just move yourself down to you know, the level that suits the grade. Um, so this, and, yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, so, the, so that's so that was the really an innovative thing to do, I think, Rich, is to have these, um, the each level as a group or each um, set of units as a group um, and distinct in terms of the largest, uh, the, uh, the large project, you know, all, all of the organizational structure but then just move them um, or, or set the actual elements at the appropriate elevation. And then of course, we don't need these, um, these, uh, those story levels to be showing uh, because they're not gonna be relevant. So A, you can crop them you know, like that, but B, you can just turn them off in that um, story levels, uh, the, the one that Rich just went and put check marks next to. So all of those can be turned off because although they're important for organizational structure, they're not important, they're not relevant to the actual section drawings. Um, and so if we just turn them off, then they'll never show up in any of these um, views. Um, all right, so Tom Palmer asked about what about cut planes? So um, we talked about that. If you use symbolic representation for, um, uh, for the walls, then that works fine, but you also have to set your cutting plan. So go back to the um, story settings. Uh, I'm sorry, go back to the floor plan. 
and let's look at the floor plan cut plane for you know for your ground floor view of the B section. Once upon a oh yeah we click to abort okay. Um, uh. Interesting that it's taking so long to deal with this. Were you running? I don't know. Sorry. Yeah, were you running into this issue when you were designing, or is this just part of? No, opening? I'm not sure what's uh, happening. It's very odd. Okay, so normally it's much more responsive. So let's we'll just have to work with it. Go back to the floor plan when you can, and I'll just talk about when you have a cut plan. The convention is to say, hey, I want to cut it at chest high. You know. Four, meter, four feet or 1.1 meters or something like that above the floor level. And the floor level is the natural zero of that story. But you can say, hey, I'd like to look up or down beyond the, the sort of abstract height or elevation of the story. You know, let's say from zero to 10 feet or zero to three meters or something like that. So um, you can say, I want to look down further. And then you can have the cut plane be at that appropriate location. So if you um, look at the cut plane for, not for the wall, but um, just uh, for the view settings. Uh, so, and, um, and in your navigator, if you right click on the, uh, the settings of the view. Oh yes, right, yep. Or click on settings. And then there's a the floor plan cut plane for this particular view that we're looking at. And you'll see it says go down um, my uh, you know uh, cut plane height to current story is is that a positive number fifteen that's fifteen hundred yeah yeah look um, I have never really been uh, totally comfortable with using uh, okay. floor plan cut planes but but floor plan but I you know, um, I make them work. Um, so I've been comfortable with, with whatever I've drawn in this situation. Um, so you didn't actually have to adjust this so we can cancel out of it. You know, this is 1500 meter uh, or 1 1.5 meters. So that's, uh, you know, yeah. the cut yeah. line. Um, but if we cancel out of this um, here and just select one of the uh, nor uh, swinging doors, for example, Yep. and open up its settings. On the floor plans, um, part of this, uh, so where it says all parameters, if you change, uh, look at the, oh, actually, I'm sorry, it's in the floor plan planet section. It says floor plan display symbolic. So what it's saying is, hey, just show this door as a symbol. So I don't care what elevation it is, whether it's above or below the cut plane, just show it symbolically um, there. If we were to turn it into projected, we might have an issue. Now cancel out of this. Um, well, well, you could change it there and all of a sudden um, it might look. It hasn't changed there, but. Yeah. All right, well, let's check, select the, the, um, the, the um, what do you call it, the uh, wall and see what, it's, what it says, because I believe the wall would also be set to be symbolic. Symbolic cut. Yeah, so if you were to change that one to um, projected, then this might not look correct. Yeah, you can see now we're not seeing the, the uh, doors at all because we're actually cutting through at a level that isn't, you know, isn't appropriate. Yeah. So if you just undo that and we just have the walls as symbolic, then it'll show the doors and windows in a, say, the most common sim symbolic uh, method. Um, so Tom asked to save the cut plane level with save views. So that's another alternative. If you need to have um, uh, actually cut through things like you have a clear story, um, and so you're doing a lower level of doors and windows and an upper level of, of high windows, clear story, um, then you might need to do it as projected and uh, say that you're cutting through, set the actual cut plane height to cut through those upper windows. But here it was simpler, just saying, hey, all of these are sort of normal floor to ceiling walls, and they just have, some of them have doors and windows, just show them symbolically. 
Um, in the same way, um, how's your uh, the stair? You know, the stair would be another one that um, uh, probably these stairs will just be either. Uh, let me see. Uh, these are just lines copied up probably from the from okay. below. By the way, just I'll explain something here, and I'm not sure whether how, how many people do this, um, but I always have extra stories. So, you know, there's the ground floor, for instance, but then I've got the structure below the first floor, right? Or um, uh, seating soffits. Uh, you know, in other words, there's an extra story in there where I can hide or I can do things like the stairs or uh, if I go up one more, you know, that'll be that. So maybe if I go down to the garage level, um, sometimes I'll have beams uh, separated out. I've got that in D, I can could show that, but but there, I use those to be able to, sometimes it's a pain when you've got your slab and you're trying to pick something up in here and you pick up the slab all the time. So I tend to have the slab on a sec separate story. Um, uh, you know, you can still see it through ghosting and or through a trace, uh, but but it just makes it a little easier to pick up what you want to pick up without having to pick up other things. You know, even if you're doing a a group um, with the with the mark with the um, you know trying to grab a number of things. If I do that here, are, you, are, are, are the stairs then all just line work? No, there would be. Well, in this instance, they're probably more likely to be slabs i'm trying to think of where i've created these uh there we go so those i created those as this was a few years ago for a start so the stair maker wasn't as uh, sophisticated um so i i have tended to use slabs as my steps and you know you can sort of see that in that in the section um and then and then i just copy that up and and uh, change them to lines for the where it's appropriate. Okay. Um, all right. So that that's the way that you're getting the drawings out cleanly, and and it gives you a schematic level representation, which is all you needed for the stairs at that time. So so I say it's I try to do completely BIM, but there is some 2D line work, and and because it's just more even with the stair, um, I find particularly I, I guess because of my um, use of extra stories in between, you know, um, normal stories, you can't show the stair the way you want it on, you know, like two, if I have a two stories in between, one for, for beams and one for structure or whatever, I then can't make the, um, the stair symbol work uh, on the ab above stories without showing it on stories I don't want to see it on, et cetera, so. Okay, uh, so a tip, a tip there, Rich, is that, uh, first of all, with the more recent stair maker, um, to or stair tools, uh, you can have the stair be visible on specific stories. Uh, so you can say, you know, it's on story 11 to 14, you know, or whatever those are, um, because it starts at 11 and there are some intermediate stories and then it reaches 14 as a real story. Uh, you can say, uh, you can control the visibility of the line work uh, independently. So you can say at the top story, what do you want to see? Um, it doesn't, doesn't get affected by the fact that there are inter intermediate stories yeah, that you I might have. And then, you can just, and then you can turn off the layer for the stair on the intermediate stories if if you want, you know, if, sure. if it's, you know, if it's not appropriate there. Yeah, um, normally I probably wouldn't need to, but I, yes, I think I have seen that and, and actually probably done it uh, in one of our the more recent. See, this was originally, uh, I'd have to think back. It's probably four years old now. Um, uh, so whatever, whatever um, version of Archicad we were on then. Um, yeah. Uh, so now, what else was I going to explain? Uh, one of the things that Tom Palmer has a couple other comments here. He mentions, um, you know, you had said, hey, I don't like selecting the slab inadvertently when I'm hovering over things and whatever. He points out that there's the magnet or quick select. Um, option which uh, you can turn off um, either uh, so let's just talk about it just as a quick yep. tech tip um, zo just zoom back into um, you know one of those areas and uh, so if you have the arrow tool um, active and you hover over let's say the middle of the slab uh, well see unfortunately the slab I'm oh, sorry uh, the slab in this case is likely 
Uh, no. Uh, so where is the slab? Oh, yes. OK. Yep. So if I hover over the middle of it. OK, so, if, if, I so if, that off already. All right. So, yeah. So just um, go yeah. back to the arrow tool and let's just show where that quick select is, because not everybody knows. Um, so there's next to the arrow this little magnet icon or quick selection. So if you click on that, now when that's active and he hovers over it, you can see that it's saying, oh, would you like to select the slab? And as you move to any other area, you know, um, uh, you know, it, it will just continue to pre-select things. And that, so if I'm trying to just select the co counters, for instance, this is what often happens. Yes, if you've got it switched on and you think, oh, bugger, you know, I can hold the shift key down, mind you. Um, and and still select that without it without selecting the slab so that's in case you don't know that it's holding the shift key down it's the, uh, it's the space bar key sorry space bar sorry yeah uh, it temporarily turns off the um, the magnet basically so you don't have to worry about selecting it but um yeah whether it's an old habit or whatever i just find that often it's easier obviously in this case i haven't done that it is on the same story but it allows me to, of course, if I pick up a corner, you're still going to pick up that slab. So, yeah. um, so anyways, that's that's one of the things that I've right. found reasonably well. Um, um, so another clarification from Tom. So Tom, thank you for all your questions. Um, these are great. For the rest of you, please feel free to ask some questions. Um, so in this example, he is isolating building groups as well, correct? So when he views the A block, does he use the home stories um, so all of the units in the a block you know the four or five or six units are in one group of stories and he can yes. um, then see you can see right now there's the ones that are in that block uh, the other ones that are you know in different units are on a different story now on the layout sheet how are you combining them that's that's the other thing we haven't oh, looked at it okay. on all the right. layout sheet several drawings all placed to look like it's one drawing all right and mark kessis says thank you i've had so, confusion with the magnet yeah okay so here we go so this is the ground this is the all the ground floor units together but in reality on the layout sheet you will notice that there are one well it must be five one two three four five maybe even six different um um layouts that have been brought they've been brought straight in from each of those so if i took a look at for instance doing that uh well it doesn't really matter i can go to my drawing well, manager. Select, select one of them one one of them and let's just see which one is which because that's the yeah okay for instance there's you can see all the ones that are in that in that group there's a b c d e and and uh, another e for some reason um and uh, so if i select just a and it's pretty easy to position these because you'll notice that when i had only that one group of b units selected you could still see all the other section markers so it's very easy when you're you know if you take and um, bring this across you can easily pick up the other markers and drag and drop exactly in the right spot so you've always got them aligned up and then it's just a matter of deciding how you want to split the um you know the the uh, it takes a little bit of course to get the driveway is the same on uh or or which layer that's on and then showing through you'll notice that if i go to b the b group that's an overlap and that's mainly take to take in the the um the uh, driveway so that can be because this a group will have a transparent background can you select the b group by itself again and um just want yep. to point out it's, it's a non-rectangular yeah so i've cropped it in various ways to yeah to... so for, for those of you who don't know you can uh your drawings that you place onto a sheet have a, a frame and the frame can be rectangular or you can just edit it like a normal polygon and say I want to remove stuff from it or add node points and say I want to cut around things. Now the other thing that um, that you can uh, do here that uh, is 
if you use a drawing title that's uh, associated with the drawing, you can make one of the drawings have a title and the other ones turn off the title. It looks yep. like you have all of them turned off and you're just putting a, a title on uh, the, the sheet itself. Yes, I, I do that mostly, except, except when I'm doing sections or elevations or even sometimes separate floor plans on the same plan, which I can show you an example of later, but um, yes. So, so, in, so in the cool. info box, if you're in the info box at the very top of the screen, if you can scroll over and just show how it says no drawing title. So no title is uh, what oh, it I says. Here he is. Yep. Yeah, and you're you're maybe you don't really use that much at all because you no. prefer. So anyway, but that's where you would, if you press down on that, you'll see the option to choose whatever style title would be most common or that you that you'd normally use yeah. any of these other ones. All right. So I'm just looking at questions here. Um, um, so Mark says, I have LCs set to have the slabs off when editing vertical elements. I'm not quite sure what LCs um, means, um, but um, Ramrick asks, how long did it take you to complete this project? Oh, gee, that's a good question. Um, it, um, I, you know, the first, the first um, set of draw, full set of drawings with all the units on it, were were fairly quick. I mean, I did cheat a bit because I had done other previous work for this developer, um, a set of six units. Um, so this the group A was basically a copy of those six units uh, initially, you know, I mean, that that was the, the starting point, if you like, uh, they, they're nothing like them as it, well, having said that, for instance, wrapping this stair around um, um, the walls from the, the garage, you know, so that part of the stair was flowing up the garage, saves a bit of space in the unit. That was something which was definitely a um uh, a feature that that helps save space in small units or smaller units um so that's the same and i suppose even looking at maybe this layout here was essentially the same so i had a starting point which i was able to grab from another from another um uh, set of drawings um otherwise almost everything else was was from scratch um uh, but again i, I um, I'd have to go back and look. I, I would think probably within within a month or four, three or four weeks, I would have had the first drawings done up. Um, once I get what going, it, it can be pretty quick. Um, and depending how much other work I've gone on, of course. But um, now yeah, you so. uh, you said that this project was abandoned after getting um, it, you got a permit, but they did, weren't able to figure out a viable financing. Is that right? Yeah, look, it's a complicated thing. You know, it's one of these uh, um, combined, uh, you know, um, uh, financiers, you know, and and, there, and in actual fact, there might have been a bit of, of a little bit of uh, of um, uh, scheming going on and money being taken out that shouldn't have been taken out, et cetera, in the end. But in the end, basically, it fell over financially. They either couldn't get the funding or um i don't think it was really a cost issue necessarily although it's obviously a multi-million dollar um project and you know it would so have been built in stages in terms of your drawings then did you stop then before doing um uh, details no i got into construction uh, documentation on this um uh not to a great deal but certainly i mean all the staging etc was um planned uh, I got that here this is a this is a um, an abridged version for here we go staging plan so you know it was all we were working on how we would you know stage where's stage one um, stage one where there were three lots at the top that were meant to have individual uh, housing on it uh, sold off separately um, so that was going to be stage one selling those off to get a generate a bit of income to to continue with the rest. Uh, stage two was then this middle section here, uh, and stage three would have been these bottom units and then the and the C units. 
So that was the the idea of of how the ball, you know, would be um, mm -hmm. okay. constructed. Um, excavations, etc. I was, uh, you know, did some calculations for uh, the excavating, particularly in this area of uh, unit E's, because they were the garages were quite deep in the ground. Um, so did calculations for that. So how do uh, you calculate uh, the cut? You know, the excavation. You, are you well, doing I, solid operations and comparing stuff? I, I took the initial um, uh, contour plans, you know, the surveyed plans, and um, I always keep that original, and then I create a a modified terrain version, and I then, you know, do all my cut and fills with the, you know, using the slabs from the lowest floor to cut into the, and then I just um, uh, do a volume calculation of the um, of the um, terrain, compare the two. Basically, I mean. So was it all cut and no fill? Uh, it pretty well all cut. There was a few. Um, trying to remember now. Uh, it would be basically mostly cut. Uh, yes. Right. Okay. And you have the simple case where you just have a defined polygon area, whether it's the full site or part of a site, and you have a before and an after version, and you can yeah. just compare saying how much volume is each one and the difference is obviously um, the cut in this case so um, that's great uh, that you you know were able to provide that and uh, let's say uh, at least know what the cost and uh, any environmental impact would be for that um, okay uh, now, no, I know I, what I, I know you, have like. other things that you wanted to show today, so we can continue on here and look at sections and look at other things or whatever. But uh, I do want to make sure that we have enough time to look at, you know, you yeah, have. Okay. Uh, well, well, I'll just quickly talk to, about something here. What I would normally do then is, if I want to do any 3D, it's pretty easy to to then uh, just simply go in and and use a marquee, for instance, in this instance. And and do a 3D of whoops, what's going on there? Um, why would that be not showing me everything? Anyways, I was going to make point out something which I would normally just use marquees to look at individual parts of the either just one unit or all the units of a group. Um, but uh, Eric also pointed out, of course, that I could always have gone to views. I hadn't ever, I don't think I've ever used it in that way, but this using this method of where you can separate the things, I could easily go to um, uh, filter ele elements and I can then say, well, I want to go from, um, if I want to just see the B units, I can go from height to site B to height to site C. Um, and then I'll only see in 3D those units that I can um, show that show us how that works, you know. And then okay, um, turn off the marquee, turn off the marquee, and let's see what that does. Yeah. So what am I? Oh, here we go. So so now I've only got that grouping of that story group that I can. Right. So those are the then, things that are. That, have home stories on that uh, one now there was an option to trim to um to the stories but of course you have a, like a 10 meter in, interim thing so if you maybe if you turn off that one that's the inner interstitial story um in that uh, filter then we'll get a a little cleaner sorry hang up No, it hasn't made any difference. That's all. No, no, no. Move, move over to the side. I think we cut off now at the bottom. Zoom out a little bit. Well, what's what's that thing that's sticking down below? Well, that's all part of the. Um, I'm presuming that this is actually terrain. So I've used a. If I was to turn on uh, my SEO. Cutting for road, for instance, if I turn that on. No. 
So I use that, uh, might, I, be, that might be on a separate story. The element that you're you know looking at. Um, possibly, possibly cutting for road and cutting. Uh, it's a shell, anyways. Well, you can see what, it, for instance, I've cut the top of these roofs with you know the parapet walls, with mm -hmm. with other roofs, etc. So I must have had one here, and I haven't pulled it out far oh. enough to cut these off. <coughs> it doesn't really matter in the scheme mm -hmm. of things. So can you can you go back to the filter one because there was an option to cut off at the the elevation uh, to trim the 3D model view based on uh, that. I don't know if you had that turned on. Yeah, trim elements to marquee, yes, but then trim elements to story range. That's the other one. That's what was missing. So do both trim elements to marquee. If you had a marquee, um, it would activate. And then trim elements to story range just above it. Oh, I see, right, yes. All right, now say OK. Well, of course, oh, actually, no, 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 that, that won't work because your story range is exactly <clears> right. Is, yes. So turn that off, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, that's a side effect of this. All right, but um, if we un unclick the top one, so one of the things we can do, just take a nice view, I mean, like one that's sort of interesting, zoom in on it and whatever, and just save that view. Um, um, let me just go back to the plans B. Oh. Well, if you just orbit, if you just orbit and zoom in, I just wanted to. All right. I was just going to turn off the um, the um, and then and then I'll go back to the three D. So uh, inter this I've I've tried to show the um, the particular siding. I'm trying to think of how I did that uh, on here. Um, can't remember now. By the way, this this cursor that you're using is an interesting one, and it makes it easy to see where you're pointing. Although it's so far, and that it's like, is that showing like a you know something being paused? You know this because uh, it's a spinning thing. Uh, what is well, that tool? You I, because I've got, you know, a 32-inch monitor, uh, another a 27 on the side, and I used to have a third one. Trying to find your cursor sometimes is pretty difficult. Um, you know, when it's just when it's just uh, even now, I think I've got that enlarged a bit. But so I just find this extremely useful. It's a program called Pinpoint, and you can have everything from from flames running around on the thing, or not. You know, it could be static. It doesn't have to be rotating like that. Um, I, and I, I, this is a custom one that I've developed. I, I did that. Hmm. All right. Except so the standard ArchiCAD environment would just have a crosshair right now, and then this is just showing where the crosshair is located. Uh, right. So it's very quick. To, you, you just, there's no way of losing that. You, you know, you know exactly where your cursor is all the time, and yet it's transparent. So it's never, it's never, you know, I don't even think about it now. It's just, it's in right. fact. So that siding that you were saying, how you were wondering how you did it, um, you wanted to select that that uh, yeah. wall and say, what is it? Um... Does that have the siding? Because uh, it's not so, as easy. So I have got a pattern on that. It's a, it's a, it's a texture. Okay, Just so a it's, it's, a, it's a surface that uh, represents that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Um, so let's just say we wanted to return to this view at some point uh, or, or get a, a view that's maybe a little bit more of yeah, something like that. Then you can save this view. I just want to point out, not everybody knows that you can save a 3D view with all of the parameters that we just did. So if you, in the view map, just find a, a convenient place to, um, to in the view map, where this 3D view might belong. Do you have other 3D oh, views? Right. Um, yes, this um, three down here, yes. In fact, I yeah, think so I've already- right click, on, right click on any one of them and say, save current view. Oh, so I've saved these, this is a, these are already saved 3D views, right? Okay. So if you right click on any of those and say save current view, which right now we've moved away from it, but that's oh, how so, you can. So if, I, so if I change this to something else, that's what you're suggesting? Yeah. And I, I now right click on that here. Uh, I can redefine that current view. 
or or down below actually you can just add new at safe current view um, that little the buttons down at yeah, the bottom it's, um... apparently it's not under the right click there so i thought it was but um uh, it's down below at the bottom of the view I, list. I can do it just on the window here, can you? Uh, um, uh, no, there's no nothing that says save. Just save the view. Uh, yeah, this would go directly to place it on the layout. But under in the bottom of the view list of the view map, there's the button that just says save current view. No, no, no lower. You have the four icons underneath the list. But two inches here. below. No. Just a little below that, there are icons. A little below that, there you go, that area. A little below. Oh, little down below. here. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> so save current view. Right. Yeah. So this, this would be a new view. You get to name it, change it from pro view pro uh, by project map. You need to make it custom. Um, and then you know give it a name Eric or whatever you know it's you know so whatever yeah and then say create and that adds it there so then you can easily go back and forth between that one and let's say the other unit D one which was a different angle and it will retain all of the settings for which stories or whether you have a marquee and what layers are turned on etc so um, all right, so I see uh, Dave Yoakum has a question off topic um, okay, about in RCAD 26, selected item window no longer expands to width necessary to read longer layer names. Um, okay, so uh, I think if you hover over things in RCAD 26 that have a layer that isn't uh, being shown, if you hover over it, it does show it in a little prompt is what I recall. So, you know, like you have a little floating thing that'll be off to the side to clarify it. Um, so anyway, that's a, a you know, um, hopefully you'll find that when you hover over it, <clears throat> you can see the full name, um, even though it's not giving you the space to read the whole name. All right, so. Um, just quickly, you, one more thing, Eric, before we move yeah. on. Um, yeah. I just, this auto versus manual updates on the layouts. Um, you, you'll notice that when I, went to most like for instance the, the whole site plan for the all the ground floor um if i had not switched off auto update that would have taken a fair while to regenerate mm -hmm. and so what i've done for this purpose is i've switched all most of the things well the things i thought i was going to look at to manual update so when you come back to that screen uh or that that layout whatever it is it'll come up quite quickly um mm -hmm. however um if you're you know dealing with vim and you're making changes as you're running along that's a danger to do that because of course you then have to remember what you may have changed you might have shifted a window but if you don't have it on automatic uh update that window is not going to be shifted in your elevation section 3d whatever so um just just a little tip it speeds things up if you once you've finished maybe but uh, while you're working you definitely want to keep it on auto in my opinion Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, and that's that's a setting for that's a setting for each drawing. So you can make it the default when you place a drawing that it's going to have auto update on, or you can select all the drawings in drawing manager. You can select drawings in drawing manager and change that setting globally. Um, if I go but to a layout, uh, so if I go to that ground floor plan. So if I select one of any one or you know all of all of these, um, what you can do then is in here you can say whether or not you have it set it updated to auto or manual. And normally I'd all leave them always to auto so that you always anytime you make a change, you've always got that coming up on in your any any layout whether it be extra elevation sections plans etc. Yeah, and in general, <clears throat> plans and 2D windows like details, uh, you know, leave it on auto update all the time. Why? Because it really doesn't take, you know, more than a, uh, a few seconds, if that, to come up. But elevations and sections, you know, that is something that, uh, you know, you might want to 
well, certainly there's a legitimate case to say um, when you're in certain modes of the project, waiting for all of the, the elevations to update on a sheet can be annoying. So, um, all, all right. right. Um, anything else from this project that you wanted to share with us? I don't think and anybody's got any questions, but otherwise I think we're pretty well. Okay, let's go on. Go on right. to, uh, you have uh, is it the Indian pa Palace that you wanted to share yep. with us? All right. So this is a project that you showed a while back um, in the Masters of Arcad Summit. Certainly very um, uh, sort of unusual architectural style in that you're in Australia and you're creating something that uh, harkens back to some very classic architecture from India. And this is for an Indian family or an Indian uh, no, man? No, I'll, I'll, I'll go through that. So let's just have a look. First off, the inspiration for this was this uh, Jodhabai Palace in uh, Fedipur Shikri in uh, Agra, India. And um, uh, it was made, you know, somebody did it to build it for his wife, as you do in, the, in those days. Um, so these are these are then um, this is part of the, some of the family there looking at this. They went on a trip. I can't say how long ago now, but a while ago. This image here is basically the inspiration for the living dining room, as you will see in the actual um, uh, build. And this, those are the type of columns that we copied. Uh, there's the family there. So they're Western Australian uh, from Perth in, initially. Um, and um, I was lucky enough to uh, be tipped off to give Cliff a call to, at the beginning of this, just when he was just starting off this project. Um, so it's, it was quite a long project, over five years, um, to get to where we are today, if not even longer. Um, again, that's just uh, some of the, that was that was Cliff and Susan. Cliff actually at this stage said something to, apparently said to, to um, Susan, I can build you this in Australia. And she said, okay. Um, so, <laughs> and that's uh, the inspiration for the master bedroom, which you will see. Uh, this was just a few weeks ago. Cliff had his 60th birthday. We had a, he throws marvelous parties. I've been to a few cost, every time the costume parties, they're, they're fantastic. Um, okay, so here's the aerial view of the, of the building on, on site. And when we built this, there was nothing on either side. So it's a, um, and it was interesting. There was 14 um, um, complaints about, uh, you know, uh, 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 objections to the design from neighbors, et cetera, in the first DA submission. but Luckily, we had a forward-thinking um, uh, planners who then accepted the the result uh, or the you know the plan as it was with a few minor things we had to change. Of course, building height was a bit of a problem with the char trees, but again, got around all of that. Um, there used should be a swimming pool in here. One of these days, it may come about, but that was in the original plans. So all of this, uh, these uh, columns, uh, all these corbels were all carved in, in uh, India and shipped over to Australia. These are still earlier, pro these are, steps are all finished now, by the way, There's, this is not how it is, in fact. Um, this is the uh, living room, dining room, looking out towards the uh, portico entrance in the background there. Uh, all of these doors as well were, um, were built in uh, India and shipped over here much cheaper. In fact, it cost more to ship the, um, all of this, all of the carved goods from uh, Brisbane when it landed on the boat than it, to, uh, to uh, Terra Nora, than, you know, just below the border of, of uh, Queensland and New South Wales there. Uh, it took, cost more to ship it from there uh, and that short distance than it did from shipping overseas in the containers. Do, do go on my, I have to just deal with something here. I'll be right back. Yep. Um, so, you know, these Dorocas, they actually open up to, to rooms above, uh, more for the kids, etc. cetera. Um, all, all these niches, that's the uh, octagonal thing in the master bedroom. Uh, so this is the, from the south. So this is the, what initially was a granny flat for the parents, uh, but is now as a six star um, B and B unit, and back in here is the second B and B unit. 
Uh, they've, you know, imported some interesting things like these doors, etc. So this is the what they call the Lotus Suite, which is the, the secondary uh, B&B unit. Um, you know, a small kitchen. Uh, these again carved in India. Ensuite. Uh, that's the front of that unit. Um, that's looking towards the Jodabai retreat or suite. Uh, the interior, that was the original kitchen area. This was initially a two bedroom granny flat and now is only a, a single uh, bedroom. Beautiful, beautiful work. Yeah, no, it's um, pretty, pretty nice. Again, the ensuite. Views to the south, you know, fantastic area. This, this went through actually, I think, five sites. Initially, it was meant to be in the valley somewhere on a flat piece of ground, was uh, 70 meters wide. Um, we went up to, um, uh, then they moved and decided they're going to do it. Uh, oh, sorry, they found a property sort of up on the, on the ridge somewhere, started to do a bit of design on that, and then they said, no, that's not going to be good enough. So then they moved up to Cairns, did a design, had to crop it down to 60 meters. Um, then they bought a property above Coolangatta, but a very steeply sloping site and decided that, that wasn't gonna work, too many, too many retaining walls. And luckily they were able to sell that back to the kids of the parents who had sold it because they didn't want it. By the way, sorry, go back to this. Um, this is then the view from the upstairs terrace on the, and that's, um, um, Coolangatta, um, Kira Beach. Um, then that's those buildings there in the background are the Gold Coast high rises. And that's looking out towards Mount, um, well, to the spring. Interesting that this balcony wall, you know, just how beautifully it integrates in, you know, obviously very modern technology, just there opening, well, opening up. This was meant to all be this, um, uh, we call them Jerokas, um, um, but I'm not sure if it was just budget or, you know, I, I, in actual fact, I have actually got a design where there's actually these chrome feet are, are covered with um, carved, you know, little plaques so that they're not, you know, a little bit more. So, yeah, so that's the... Um, uh, I did this quickly just to, to interesting point. You can see all these. This is the excavation for the three car garage uh, below the, the granny flat. See all these huge bloody boulders here, a massive. And um, um, they did, we did, a, he got a geotech um, survey of the site. They didn't hit one of these boulders. <laughs> it was all gravel and, you know, sort of rubble supposedly. So it was quite a surprise to get this. It was advantageous in that he was able to use a lot of this stone. He, he <coughs> sold some of the stone. And then the guy said, look, I can build you a, a rock wall. I think that, you know, I can maybe. <coughs> uh, where are we? Um, no, can't. Can't find it now. It was the the, the garage where it curved down to the garage that was built with stone, the wall. <coughs> These are some examples of the carved stone in India on the ground, and and then this is um, how I presented. Now, of course, I've uh, not had very much experience building in stone, like none, and um, so when I was presented the problem of of constructing all of this. Uh, I didn't even get to go to India and, you know, and study uh, carefully the palace and see how they built all this stuff. It's amazing to me at how they've done this and made it all work and stand up for 500 years. But um, so basically, I just took some inspiration from uh, Japanese uh, tem uh, um, timber temples um, and uh, using, a, uh, you know, that as the inspiration and a little bit of common sense. and. Um, um, <clears throat> looking at some, you know, <coughs> wooden puzzles. 
I came up with the method method of of building this uh, these constructions. So, oh, so now, I can't. Now your exploded your exploded diagrams that show the things floating separated from each other. Did you actually move? Um, you know, have a copy of some of your model elements off to the side and just have them separated. So that's a view of the model. I did with... exactly what I did. I I actually grabbed them to the side, lifted them up, pulled them apart wherever was appropriate, <coughs> and then did a 3D. Sorry, I had a uh, a 3D document with that. That's how those were done. So this was so the instruction. Basically... Just just to clarify for you know my. My inner teacher comes out all the time here. Yep. Um, so you take any view in ARCHICAD um, uh, in 3D, and uh, you can right-click on an empty space and say, create new 3D document. And what that'll do is it'll, whether it's an isometric view or a perspective, it'll create a, a view with line work and possibly shading um, of that angle that you're looking at. But it becomes then something that you can annotate. So you can then put dimensions and text and labels and things like that on top of it. Um, and so it's, it, it is still updating like an elevation or a section would, um, but you can't spin around it freely anymore because you've chosen a particular viewpoint to document. So that's what you, that's what, um, you did and you chose a, a, um, a style, just line drawing it looks like. Um, right, where you, you took off the shape. Yep. So if yeah, we actually so, open up one of those, if we open up one of those source views, can we just see? Uh, cool. Are they still live? If you right click on one of them, is it still have a source view? Yes, I suppose it would. Um... Okay, I'm gonna make two two quick points here. So in this source view, if you select any of these elements, it is actually selecting the elements. So just go ahead and select you know, one of them. So that is an element that is that a morph? Um, it's an object you've saved. Uh, um, it's an object. So I created. I'll, I can, I'll probably go through that if we have time to show you how I created these. You can obviously see they're not detailed to the degree that it needs to be, but certainly enough to be able to size them for a start. So I can give specific dimensions and okay. say that this is the, the ideal thing and then you take a look at the actual um Jodabai palace equivalent and carve it uh, as such okay so, so these are the this is how i I've, I've sort of put it together it's basically uh, mortise and tenon construction uh so you can see in this instance where this is a a, a solid piece from india it has a a, a mortise cut out on each side and that drops down to match up with the mortise and the ones beside it which is all well and good if everything's exact, but they weren't they weren't exactly what I'd call super accurate at times. For some reason, it seemed to be much better at the beginning, but they started getting pieces that were not square and not exactly to dimension. So that became a bit of a problem in the build. Um, I hoped that I'd get a chance to go to India and talk to the, um, you know, be able to speak to the actual um, uh, people who are carving all this and this, it, and, it, it has amazed me to some degree that I managed to put all this together and not have one objection from a from the engineers about whether this would stand up or not, considering I had no no experience. But um, yeah, and, and neither did the Indians say anything. You know, I expected maybe they'd come back and say, well, you know, we wouldn't do it that way. Um, whether they still build in this matter, I don't know, but they were certainly happy enough to to do all the carving. Uh, I think these pieces here actually were. Uh, if I show you a, a real photograph, they're are actually in either, I think they're in four pieces, and, and it's amazing to me, you can't tell that. So they're very skilled in what they do. Mm. Very skilled. Now, before you go on, um, so this is an element here, and you can see, of course, the annotation, and you'll see in the toolbox on the left side that there is all the annotation, all the elements, you know, lines and labels and things like that. Now, deselect that element and right-click an empty space, and you should be able to say open source view. Open 3D source. So now this will be a view of those elements, you know, in a normal 3D things, and you can spin around it, you know, just orbit um, around that. So this is a normal view, and basically we're not going to create a new one, but if you right-click an empty space on some somewhere here, um, then you'll see new 3D document from 3D, and that's how it was created. 
And in the 3D document, you have a choice of whether it's going to be line drawing or, sh or have shading and things like that. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that you all knew how these exploded diagrams or, you know, just any type of a um, documented 3D view gets created. Um, now, you want to talk about how you created these as objects and, and what you did with quantities, because uh, I know that was a cool thing. You said, yeah, we need five of these and 38 of those and stuff like that. Okay, so um, I think maybe I'll just go back to uh, here for the moment. Um, just let me see. This is uh, I'm just, so those I just got to show you those. Those are actually two or three, uh, you know, three or four pieces, but they you would never know if you looked at them. Uh, but that's you know these are these were complicated. Um, bits and pieces how do you get this angled uh, corbel in here and and still manage to fit it in with all the stone etc so there's some pretty complicated um i thought i had oh and that's a, an example of of some of the joinery uh, you know designed this um as well uh oh yeah okay so so for instance these are i can show you an actual 3d but these are some examples of how i constructed some of these this is the uh, Jiroka and and you can i've highlighted some pieces so that's just a bit of slab sitting on another piece of slab um i'm not sure whether that's that's probably this is probably layered uh i need to get this up again um so they, these are basically all slabs or and or walls put together to give the basic form um this is one of the corbels and again you can see how this actual is a a slice of this would all have been done by the way on the flat these are all slabs so they're upright in this position because <coughs> it's it's a oh hang on <coughs> no i probably rotated it in the 3d view but but they're all just slabs positioned nicely you know so a slab is easy to cut and form and do all this you can't do that with the wall of course if you did it on the vertical <coughs> then when you create the 3d object you can say it, by by looking at it at it in elevation, for instance, I can look at the top of this, the side view as it's lying on its back, you know, down on the flat. And when you create the object, then it's created vertically. So that's the basic method of of uh, doing these. Okay. For so let me just let me just uh, repeat one thing that might not be clear to everybody. So. You're creating these shapes using slabs and sometimes with walls uh, because it's so easy to lay it out, basically looking at what would be an elevation, but having it lying down on the floor as if it was lying on the floor. Um, and you can have things that are uh, sticking down through the floor, you know, that would be proud on the other side. Um, it's not, it doesn't have to have a single plane at the base, but essentially you're creating something um, that it, that extrudes up towards, you know, uh, the, the positive um, elevations in, in the model. Um, and then you're, once you've got this laid out, you're, um, you then select all of this and say you'd like to create a new object. Now, when you create a new object, you can choose an orientation. Um, this is something that is, goes back to Archicad's very early days. And you don't necessarily, I mean, it isn't necessarily used as widely now because you can do things with morphs, but you can basically take a top down view or a, a side view. And with the side view, if you think about it, is an elevation, but it can be considered, you can plan it out as the top view of the object. So you say, from this side view, that's going to be the top view of the object. And when you then turn it into an object, it rotates it to make it the top view. So that's how. Um, Rich has been able to create these things lying on the ground, but have them when they're saved as objects in the orientation that they need to be. So this is an example. Now, this was early days of morphs, so I haven't used morphs as much as I, um, um, but this was definitely a morph, a morph job, where this would have been slabs and then another slab on top of it, and then I've, I've um remodeled the top of this with using the morph to get, be able to get that that um you know some indication of the shape of the elephant's head the these were for the um the around the pool posts um 
So uh, go back to the 2D. Um, so this was the uh, image I found that I sort of wanted to copy, basically. And then I, I modeled these, these up from that. And then they fit into these posts. Well, there you can, there's an example there. I presume that's a 3D example. So then that's, so the glass fits in this slot in, in, in here, you know, and um, uh, that holds the glass in place. That's the post and these are for all around the swimming pool. So now that, that must be, hang on. So those were, so obviously what I've done here is to make this into a, an object. I'm sure that you'll, if I show that, that's an object. Uh, this post is probably, uh, well, sorry. So I've made, so I've basically then combined um, some of these with some of this, this is, this would be the original, um, and that's an object still. So where have I created the, uh, that's a morph. So, so that's the slab. So these, these are, this is the, the, the I think the original um, mo um, modeling I would have used for before I created the object itself. So for instance, um, yep, that's a slab, but I'm trying to think of how I've cut those out. Um, unless that, that it could even be a niche. I'm not certain how I did that now, and particularly if it's on the side, it's not an object, so. Um, it's a solid element operation. Must be, I guess. I need to turn that on. So those, so there's a sphere. You know, so, so I've used various ways of creating these. And then, for instance, if I was to take, sorry. What's going on here? Um, so if I was to, to take this, uh, uh, actually, I don't need to do that. What I want to do is go back to um, here and look at that um, in elevation from the top, or well, I'd say it's the top. So if I say, OK, so now I'm looking at that post that's lying on its side from its top. And I can then um, say object, save selection as an object, OK, and it'll go into my. The message that came up, can you just go back for a second? The message that came up is important to at least understand. Save selection as object. Oh, sorry, yes. I need to select that to yeah. do that. Yeah, and then save selection as object, and then leave the dialog box up there. It says the current view of the selected elements will be used as the floor plan view of your knob, new object, and you can use a different view if you want. But uh, so basically, this is saying that what is the side view of this these actual elements will become the top view, and it's not just pretending to be a top view; it'll be rotated. The elements will be rotated to fit that. Um, and when you say OK, then you get a chance to name it put it possibly in a folder um, and uh, you know you now have an object so this is how you've created most of the elements that we were seeing the exactly. custom elements exactly so even if I wanted this post to be on an angle well I could arrange that in this in this 3d view you know I mean I don't know I'd have to think about this a little bit but if I was to view this in this manner um, uh, it, and I said that was a top view. This is now going to come out as a 45 degree leaning post uh, right. because I did it in this manner. So you, you've got a lot of choice as to how you can use cr created molded things and, and how they'll come out as an object itself. So, so we can, uh, two more things I want to just see, not in terms of the object, but uh, just a section through you know your live model, just to see how all of this is coming out and then then your quantity takeoffs like what your schedules look like that you know when you did the orders and said yeah uh, we need so many, this is so many of that 
Uh, so you um, want to look at the section first. Uh, sections. So, so I'm, uh, we're open to questions. So please, if any of you have questions or comments, you know, it's always nice to hear comments about the design or about the methods that Rich is using or about the, you know, little tips and tricks if you if you find the any of these um, of interest or useful to you. So. so these were steel beams encased in, in timber. We'd love to have used stone. I don't know how they managed to get such long stone beams in the actual uh, although they probably weren't at quite the spans that we were doing here, but um, you zoom know, in, so uh, we can see just a level of detail that you have. Sorry, can you zoom in a little bit? So that's an actual steel beam. Mm -hmm. Don't know why it doesn't fit in the casing, but anyways, that's beside the point. <laughs> um, this. I think we had a steel column at one stage, and uh, yeah, I'd have to think about that. It's been a while. Um, the floor itself, if I was to look at an A section, when I say the floor, this was actually <clears throat> the terrace slab that you're seeing there. Uh, oh. That's not the one I want. So let's um, uh, A section B C section. So that one's an interesting one. Um, just just hold on a second here. We're seeing a section, and we're also seeing, of course, the elevation behind it. And uh, is this using the um, di marked distant area to make That's this correct. to make it fade out? That's correct. Yeah. All right. So just can you open up the section settings, and we'll just take uh, a very quick look at um, where that's at. Um. So the po point when you're opening up, if you right-click an empty oh, space, sorry, not yeah, there. Not there. Um, ah, help me, uh, Eric. I'm trying to think of In where. Space, I... Right-click and say section set uh, section settings. Um, okay, so do, 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 do. and then um, on uncut elements, if you scroll down in that middle area, if you scroll down on uh, in the right. lower part of the uncut elements, there'll be. Um, uh should be something that's fade distant elements so it used to be called marked mark distant elements or something like that now it's called fade distant elements which is what it's commonly done um uh, you know you technically you could make them red and make them bright but usually you make them fade yeah. into the background so you put a check oh, mark there. The, the pen the pen um either color or or uh, weight here so that's what i've done yes and so when you have a check mark there, you can set up how it'll look beyond that distance. And then on the plan, you can say, hey, the section cuts through here. And you also use it for elevations. It starts here. It, up to this point, it's full intensity. It's normal. And then beyond that point, up to whatever extent you tell it to render, you can say, make it all gray, make it all you know, somewhat different. So that, of course, helps for clarity. I'm just trying to find my oh that's E section I was looking for. So if you right click on the E section there and say select on floor plan. Oh right, okay, I'll do that. Yep. So this is another little tip, like hey, you, you have a section, you know generally where it is, but you you know, sometimes it's a little hard to find where the marker is on the plan. And um so if you right click on um, on the um, in the view map on the section name, like it says E section, and then oh, say yes. select uh, marker on the home story and zoom to it. Then you can see it, the, the section is selected in the middle of that screen. Um, and uh, 
you know, sometimes it's a little hard to see, but uh, basically you can see that it's yeah, selected. There, there, there's the distance that I've used for the for setting that behind, you know, behind the. It doesn't make much sense on that one without the ground floor. Uh, yeah. So it, the home story, in most cases, will be one where you can see the section in context. But in this case, you you've set the home story to be, you know, some other remote one. Yeah. Um, just to go back to that uh, E section, you'll notice that these these were all pre-stressed um, slabs. So so I've actually modeled those. So I yeah, let's, to... see, let's zoom in on that so we can see what you. So, and because of the spans, etc., we we just used pre-stress um, concrete uh, sections dropped in, two different sizes. I'm trying to think of how I did that, but <laughs> well, are those are those um, custom profiles for beams or what? um yeah a whole section floor beams yeah so if you right click on that and say edit um uh, what is it estimate edit custom profile edit, edit selected composite profile oh that's right yes that's what i've done with the uh, is complex profile yeah so basically that's just the shape it's drawn as a fill so if you select that element it is now in this context is it, it is an editable fill and the fill is made of something steel or concrete or you know something else and then when you draw it as a beam it just extends in a straight line it extrudes that solid so you notice, area you notice i've got quite a few of, of uh, different ones of these and that's because of length oh sorry not so much of length but of, obviously you can see it's a it's a smaller section because it had to fit in a, in a particular um, place on the on the floor um yeah so it's quite a few um as you can see quite a few uh complex profiles have used in this um trying okay. to think of what else, there's anything else of particular interest but anyways yeah that's, that, that's that's interesting i've frankly i've never seen that in a section because the i guess the, the construction techniques that I'm seeing most frequently don't use that, but this is, I can understand it instantly that this is a, a lightweight, relatively light, lighter weight way to yes. uh, construct yes. these things. So, um, yeah, so what else we got here? Um, so uh, Steve uh, Nichols says, can we see some 3D views of Richard's model? So we've been seeing sections, we've seen a lot of views of the actual building. Um, let's yeah, if we can see uh, that, that would be great. And then, then we want to see, um, I guess, the uh, the, your quantity takeoff stuff and talk about oh, schedules. Um, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> whoop. Do you have any saved views? I, I, I normally, uh, I don't know if other people do this, but I put in a no cameras because I don't like to have the cameras floating around all the, all over the place. Um, so, uh, where are we? let's see how that one looks. Now, normally I would have, Add a little bit more color. Right. So that's the swimming pool there. Whoops, I jumped around a bit. Yeah, lovely. So uh, just zoom so in on some of the details, yeah. My, my columns aren't exactly um, uh, carved uh, as the other ones, but basically have the same shape and and um, 
you know, the beams and the corbels are again close enough to represent uh certainly the size that's that's a critical thing all these dimensions length height um not so much where the design features here were but certainly certainly length and height and you know how they fit together was can you cool. zoom in on, on that corbel there um because i'm seeing so, uh, sort of an extra line that is interesting um is that like just slightly yeah. proud of it yeah, yeah. There we yeah, so they they are based, you know, they give you some idea too in in other sections that you know it's not a flat plane. It's um, there is there is some 3D, uh, you yeah. know, as with this one here, you know, you can actually see that there's a some relief between the surfaces, and, and like I said, to get these kind of shapes, it's easy to do when you're creating on the flat with a slab, but otherwise it's not as I'd love to be able to use Rhino or some other program, but can't I, I can't learn ARCHICAD well enough to let alone spending time on some of those other programs as well. So mm -hmm. now by the way, uh, it, it's showing the glass as reflective rather than transparent. Um is uh, that a, a setting with the glass that it's uh, you know uh, low? Yeah, look, it might be something to do with when I when I transferred it to uh you know version 25 because it was way back in well can you select one of the things that is glass and just see what what surface it's yes. defined to be? um well hang on that'll be what am i doing here what's going on um you could go up to your railings because that would might be the simplest one to pick oh on the oh i see right yes on the balcony or whatever So right now it doesn't, um, this is an object, so we don't have control of surfaces there. So it should be, that's, um, yeah, it's, that's my normal. CMACD glass, doors and windows. You had, you had, it was set up to CMACD glass, doors yeah. and windows. All right, so if you cancel out of this, um, don't change it, and let's just see what that surface setting is for CMACD glass. Um, so uh, option oh, surface. Yes. All right, yep, 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 yep. Uh, where are we? Options. I've lost, I've lost my palette. Um, can I do it here? Uh, yes, you can. Um, so if you, if you go up to, actually, if you go to the menu for options, And then element attributes surfaces. And you do CMACD if you find you get CMACD glass for doors and windows. Showing. It's... So it is looking very transparent there. So it's it's um, so you must be a setting in your 3D window to turn off transparency right now. Um so if you um if you go back to the view menu 3d view styles so if you go back to the um the 3d styles up at the top or almost near the top of that Transparency is on. Transparency is on. That's interesting. So why would um, why would we not see through it? All right. Well, it is a mystery. Basically, I was looking to see what is what are these things made of? They're made or what are they designated as a surface? Um, and they do there appear. To... Don't know what the difference in the settings were, but that's there we go. Okay. Um, of course, it was sort of a nice effect, but this is... Um, <laughs> well, I wouldn't be normally what I'd, I'd be wanting, of course. So I've, I've done some um, interior um, work, but um, not not a huge amount. Um, obviously, um, 
Oh, get a get a grip on things, Rich. Yeah, so you can see that in, in you know the interior is still I've still got these things and um, mm -hmm. uh, there even be, might be a bit more detail um, if I was to look at the layers, but I think that's basically what what it is. There wasn't a great deal of necessity to do to do too much except to make sure I get the dimensions of all the stuff correct. Okay, so let's take a look at your quantity um, reporting because. That I remember you showing us at one point a while back, and uh, it's always good to just see how you have that organized. Um, okay. So we're open to, open to more questions. Um, we still have almost 80 people on the call right now, so do feel free to ask some questions. Um, oh, I know. Uh... Uh, I thought I'd switch. Oh, I know. Sorry, I've got them here somewhere. Uh, oh, okay. Well, that one, that one's good. Let's just look at it. Uh, I've got some better ones here. I think I'll do. All right. Well, while you're doing that, basically we're seeing a, um, a schedule that's organized, uh, in this case, horizontally rather than vertically. So that each element is arrayed from left to right. Um, and then you have some data about the element, including the quantity. So basically in the schedule, it's saying merge, um, merge uh, elements that are the same, that are exactly the same designation and, and everything. Um, so these are, this is a, a complete list of all the objects that we required to be carved in India. So all the different types of scalped uh, arches that were necessary, you know, with the various sizes, etc. And you notice these are all one, but uh, there should be down below. Yeah, you had some sixes and things like that. So yeah. Uh, oh. So why is hang on? I'll try this one. Don't know why there's a these tubs yeah, so in there. Near the, top, near the top, you have ones that have. Was there? Quantity. Was there? Okay, sorry. Well, actually, um, I don't know. You you just look. You, you can see it better than I can. Just where anywhere where there's more than one. Yeah, I, I thought I would have had them with multiple quantities. I mean, as an example, there's four of the jollies, which I don't have the, or there's two of the stair um, uh, ones. Uh, there's there's a half scallop two, but why the rest are <coughs> just ones? <coughs> I guess, unfortunately, this has been done, <coughs> excuse me, a long time ago. I don't see, oh, there's there's two of those. Okay. Um, All right. So was, let's go to yeah. the scheme settings. Let's just look at scheme settings because that's right. an important thing to understand. Um, uh, where is So we were looking at it on a layout sheet, and that layout yeah. sheet had multiple rows um, there. And now you're looking at the schedule. If you had right-clicked on on the the drawing there, it would have allowed you to say open source view, and now we get here. Now what we see is scheme settings. If you go to the upper right to scheme settings. So this is how I picked um, all the items. Um, basically, they're on a on a layer. Um, uh, I've also excluded some items, so it's not a beam segment and it's not a column segment. Okay. Uh, Which element. is actually redundant because the the first choice is it's an object, and then right. there are certain layers. Uh, that was inherited when you moved from one version of Archet to another. They put in that to avoid messing up schedules that were existing, but in this case, it's redundant. 
because um, an object is not a beam segment. Uh, now, down below, you'll see in your listing of things, 3D front axo um, is one of the things that's what give the, gives the image. Now, the thing that combines it and says, I want to see how many, if you cancel out of this, um, then you'll just see in the upper left of the schedule, there's something that says merge items. And that's what says, hey, if they're exactly the same, they're on the same layer, the same object name or element type, the same size, et cetera then just if there are more than one to um you know list uh, that instead of listing them side by side this is but then I, what i've done here of course is i've <clears throat> put in their id which i'm assuming is what separates them then if i yes. take the id <clears throat> in the scheme settings if i was to delete that so you might have you might have some schemes that are not not um the same you know that that don't have that I mean, you can you can do it here if you just for demonstrations. So now that top line that has an identifier is going to be removed. So then we'll see how many of your regular Eve support two eight zero three one four are, regardless of their ID. You know. Um, yeah. So there we go. Now we get the quantities of each. Yeah. So that's. That's how you do it. You basically, in order to say there are several of them, you need to make sure that you're not showing any attribute that would be unique, like the ID. But then you can have the ID associated with it, so you can, when you are retrieving or or on site, maybe things are tagged, and you can say this is, you know, number three zero five seven, and then you say, oh, that one goes in this area. So. Yes, so yes. You might have a schedule. You might have a schedule where they're all listed separately, and you might have a schedule where you have summaries saying there are five of these and ten of those. Um, and then the other thing I want to point out is so when we have a schedule like this, which obviously has many many elements and can't fit in one long line, then there's yes. an, an option in the when you're placing it on a sheet to say start another row or start another column, um, because I would like to be able to just see these in stacked rows. So if you select one of those, um, the, the actual thing there. So this, you know, so this was, this was um, <clears throat> uh, if I click on this, I should be able to, uh, where is it? Yeah, you had it. So, um, all right that's not what i want maybe it's in the top right maybe you have to do it in the top right it should be down here i just have to pick the so if i come up oh uh, no, no I, think this, I think this is going to scale it yeah um <clears throat> start at the top right so one. grab um select it from the top right instead of the bottom right Or is it is it a side? No, it's go to the top right, the right hand one. Um, okay, you might have to be in. Let's see, you're in the arrow tool. That's interesting. So this um, is a maybe I can use it. <clears throat> Um, if I was to go, so what we're looking for, for those of you who are a little puzzled, is there should be a pet palette option that says reconfigure the table that we're we're displaying, and uh, you know just ch I'm going to set the width that it should fit into, and then just make as many rows as needed. Um, that's the pet palette option. So you've created a new sheet, you're dropping in a schedule. The schedule yeah. when it drops in is gonna be very long and wide. So 
So let's see, I'm looking at, uh, all right, so there are some other questions. Um, so uh, Karsten says, it's an extremely impressive 3D model. Well done, Rich. Nicole, how long did it take you to do this project? Amazing amount of detail. And Tom says, did Indian fabricators or carvers produce shop drawings for review? So how long did it take and did you get shop drawings from the fabricators? Uh, well, the first question about how long did it take, like I said, is that this project lasted over five years. Um, so, you know, really hard to say when I did the, uh, and it also had those five revisions, you know, major revisions where once off it was all ground floor, then it became a two story when we had to cut it down for the site size. But most of the modeling, you know, of all the corbels and the and the columns, it would have all been there pretty early in the piece. Uh, look, it would be difficult for me to exactly say. Um, yeah. Well, obviously you had these different phases because of changing the lot and uh, and all and studying things. So here that, we have. There's that option. So yeah. there's the option there. <clears throat> so then you can decide. How many rows you want, <clears throat> what size you you know, how far what across, and it'll then obviously this this um, schedule needs to be you know these need to be um, made a bit broader to fit those windows properly, but <clears throat> not sure why it's not that way because it would have been at some stage. So now I've got three three rows, whereas mm -hmm. if I I can go back in here and probably eat well. I know I can. I could make this two rows because I've got that. I've got this selected here. So it's that pet palette option in the bottom right that's reconfigure table or or restructure table or something like that. And uh, your your point about in terms of having some of the cells not quite wide enough. Um, so that that's controlled if you go into once you have this pop yeah. up if you click on and say open source view it'll bring you to that schedule and we can just look at that so if you um open source view and then click in the preview window of any of the um uh you know elevations of these elements now you can manually do this but the quicker way, way of doing it is to just simply come in here and get that and double click Oop. yeah that, that'll work for that individual element why didn't it why is it because yeah. you don't have it all selected you need to be uh select the entire thing um i think why is it closing back down well scroll to the left oh, there we go oh. okay now, if you if you just click in the preview window, sorry, if you just click in the preview area of one of these ones that's that's not that's not wide enough, the actual elevation area, click in it. All right, now you can see on the left side it says um, scale fixed and aligned to there. Um, let's see what do we have um, to fit. So to fit would be an interesting one. Um, we don't want to do that. It'll actually then reduce things. You know, you can see um, to to do that. So if you um, uh, oh, if I you see. change it back to a fit, this, right? If you change it back to fix, then it, of course it's not going to fit. Um, in this case, now just um, you should be able to scroll to the left side and select the entire um, the entire uh, table. Oh, right. Yes, I should be able to up. Uh, where is it? OK, there's um, an option in. Um, uh, let's see, where is it? Three dot symbol, the three dot symbol just below the gear. Just below the what? Oh, they say, yes, that's correct. Just below the gear, the three dot symbol there. Yeah. Yep. And then you can see resize rows to, um, sorry, columns to fit content. That's the one we want. And then say okay. So now that's that gives you this automate automatic um, you know optimized thing depending upon how wide they are. 
I knew all that, of course, but I just forgot. <laughs> well, it, it's so much to remember. Um, and uh, sometimes it's good to stumble along until you figure, find it. All right, yeah. so um, the question was, uh, did you have the fabricators or carvers produce shop drawings for review? No, 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 there was, no, they just took what I had and did it. Right. Uh, we asked, I asked, you know, all that from Cliff. Remember, um, I didn't drive a lot of this. I mean, Cliff himself was the um, project manager, essentially. So he was in communication with the Indians. I mean, I had a little bit of discussion with them, but uh, it was mainly through Cliff and we sent stuff through. And like I said, I expect to have a lot more feedback from them, but um, uh, Cliff was happy with what they were doing. <coughs> you know, he had a fairly good contact over there who was supervising in that respect. And generally speaking, most of the stuff came through was was pretty good. But like I said, there was some instances where they had to do a fair amount of <coughs> remodeling. One of those corner corbels came and was nothing like what my drawing was. And I don't know why that was, but um, and we expected too that they would have made pieces and then fitted them together to make sure that they all worked together. But mm -hmm. they didn't seem to do that. But um, it's all, you know, come together and um, a bit of chem set, a few. Um, pins here and there, everything is holding together, which is always good to see. Right, now a couple other things I'm just gonna um, point out from a teaching perspective. So where it um, says view from opening side, if you just click on that. Oh, sorry, the back to that. Yeah, that, that uh, schedule. Uh, <clears throat> oops, not that one. Uh, okay, so if you just click on view from opening side, Sorry, so I'm just trying to, well, I'll do this one. Okay, yes, so click on. Click on view from opening side. The, the text that's on the left of all the previews. Yes. Oh, is it coming thing there? And you can just edit that and let's just call it elevation or something like that. Right. So the, the, that, the formal name in our, inside our CAD is view from opening side and it does identify that it's the side that opens as opposed to the other side, right? Um, and, uh, but that, you can do that. Now, the where it says door name, that's the library part name, P arch door large and P arch whatever. If you want to have a different name there, you can't edit it if you're using the, the actual door name, but you could have something that would be, you know, description or door type or something like that. And you could literally just name it the way you want. Um, uh, uh, obviously, you have an ID that's more formal here, like DALGO2 or whatever. Um, but you you can't if the library part name in Archicad doesn't suit you, then you can use a different field for um, for that. Right, now yes, these yes. are custom ones, I assume, because you you know they are so custom. So if you wanted to, you could name them. You know, well maybe this is exactly what you wanted. So. Um, but what we commonly see are things like, you know, W220 Archicad 26, you know, you know, W2 fixed 26 or or whatever. And so the name in that case would be a library part name and not necessarily what you'd want to put on the schedule. Um, yes, so. all right. Um, okay. uh, just just quickly, I'll look at one more. Um, I was just going to mention, I'll just mention that the walls in this were very complicated because some were had uh, Indian red sandstone on either side and that would be up to a, up to the ceiling height and then that changes from Indian red sandstone and and unfinished or or painted uh, or then as you get up to the parapet walls double you know uh, 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 FC paneling on one side and gyp rock on the next or so I had a lot of uh, wall types. I'm not sure whether I can. Yeah, here we go. Um, so there were a lot of different wall types, and he wanted all those. I did. I did quantity takeoffs on surfaces for all those types of walls of all the different mm -hmm. walls throughout. The, so I had to also come up with a naming convention for walls so that I could basically individual individually identify 
every wall in the place to um, to then you know gather information about surfaces. Uh, so, you know, can you show us one of your reports for the surfaces? So we're going to be finishing up um, shortly. It's been two hours. Um, please fill in some comments. You know, I want to thank you, Rich. You know, go ahead and show this, but uh, amazing work. You know, beautiful detail, um, and uh, really using ArchiCAD in some uh, creative ways that you know I would say are unusual. You know, to see this type of um, vocabulary um, and to do it in a cost-effective manner for, uh, you know, uh, getting it fabricated and then brought in. All right, so here we've got um, these walls. So but please, all of you, uh, uh, just give give uh, Rich some feedback. So we have um, then these uh, different wall types of thickness. So um, we have the first three look like they're th the same thickness, the same name, but they have a different ID. So these are three different walls made of the same stuff. Is that right? Exactly. Yeah. So these are all just as particular, I mean, you know, there's all different types of walls in here, um, concrete, but they're like walls and they're timber. And, but they, as you can see, they also have different um, surfaces. This is paint and marble, um, tile and tile, paint and marble. Um, so, yeah. So that was the, you know, there'd be. Uh... Okay, and all of these things can be exported into spreadsheets. So for example, if you want to calculate further based on the length and the this and the that, how much concrete, how much of this material, how much cladding you need. Uh, while you can do a lot of it within ARCHICAD using formulas uh, to, to calculate from uh, components of the element and multiply things together, um, it's often it's better just to dump some basic data out and in, uh, you know, in a spreadsheet, do the calcs. Um, so Tom says a great presentation. He also notes that you can add dimensions to the graphics. So those preview windows that, uh, or I mean, sorry, That's the schedules. Right, yes. the, so the schedules that uh, showed, you know, the windows, doors, and even the, you know, the corbels and other objects, you can do some basic dimensioning in there. I know that you can do overall dimensions, you know, width and height. I don't quite know if you can go in and, and select individual points on the element and have sub-dimensions. Um, I'm not quite sure about that. Um, all right. Yeah, wonderful to see what what you're able to do to make it, you know, it's really a BIM BIM project that gets all this data. And uh, what was the overall budget? Are you able to uh, share that with us? Well, <laughs> the, the beginning budget was 1.2 million, um, which a few of us, you know, uh, thought was absolutely, uh, you know, a little bit low to say. Uh, I think it's ended up costing more like 2.4 in the end, so. Okay. But, but that, and that's a lot of work done by the family, by the way. They, uh, they, they actually put a lot of this stuff in place themselves. They had carpenters in to do a lot of the, you know, the parapet and you know timber work, and they obviously had uh, the actual walls of the ground floor are all concrete block, meant to be covered with Indian red sandstone. So obviously the price would go up a bit more again if that was done. But in the end, they painted. Um, so you know there were certainly contractors and builders coming in to do some of the jobs, but a lot of the um, he, he he you know bought a, a front end loader type thing to help put all the corbels and stuff into place. Um, um, did a lot of the um, you know they had hoist systems from the roof to be able to bring things up to the upper levels. So a lot of the work was done by themselves. So it's 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 been a a, a very much a family project. Mm, awesome. So we have some comments here. Um, so great presentation. That's from Tom Palmer. And the Bunbury says, thank you. Amazing work. Lots of schedules. Eric Reinhardt, thanks for sharing your work. Cheers. 
in Reed. Thank you, Rich. A rich and mature variety of Archicad techniques. Um, let's see, well done. And Tatiana Rakic, thank you both very much. Amazing project, intricate, beautifully organized. Absolutely. So <clears throat> any last words, Rich, um, before we finish up? I th and thank you again for getting up super early to share with users around the world. Not a problem. Pleasure to do so. Um, <clears throat> I hope some people learned something from this. Um, and uh, yeah, it wasn't just meant to show off pretty pictures, but and anybody got any ideas about how I could have done it better? More than welcome to tell me. I'm, uh, yeah, you know, unfortunately, working as an individual um, without you know other other people to turn and discuss things with, I don't think I learned nearly as much about Archicad as I'd like to know. Um, it certainly great to be part of you know a community like this which I don't even participate as much as I should um, but uh, yeah it's uh, it would be handy to have a few other people in the office to be able to discuss things and and work out maybe a better method of doing something but um, yeah learn along the way and um, hopefully uh, you haven't missed out on too much oh I, th I think you use the the tools elegantly and efficiently and uh... You know, I don't see anything really, uh, you know, systematically to suggest. I mean, here and there, a little, a couple little tips, most of which you knew, just hadn't, you know. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, great work. Um, so let's see if there's any other comments here. No, that's it. So thanks again. Thank you all for joining um, the call today. <clears throat> I don't have a, 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 a guest lined up for September at this point. So if any of you want to volunteer, um, you know, saying you have some interesting work to share, uh, definitely uh, would love to see it. Tom uh, Palmer, you, you've had a lot of comments, so maybe you, you'd consider sharing your work. Um, um, imagine you're, you've got some well, uh, you know, well-developed projects given the types of questions you've said. Um, so please, uh, reach out to me at support at bobro.com. If you'd like to pass on information to Rich Matthews, what's the best way to reach you? Um, uh, well, my uh, email address is, you know, rich at radfx.com.au, pretty simple. <clears throat> so rich at radfx.com.au? That's correct, yep. Okay, and if you, for some reason, can't track that down, just send it to me and I'll forward it on. So thanks again, Rich. Awesome to uh, have you back on the show. Thank you very much. And uh, yep, good luck to everybody with whatever they're doing. All right. All right. Take care then. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. <clears throat>